This video is about how to install Linux Mint 16 Petra with a Cinnamon desktop into VirtualBox. The outcomes for this video would be to download Linux Mint version 16 Petra, create a virtual guest for Mint, install Linux Mint, and then finally update Linux Mint. You do not have to install VirtualBox guest editions because Linux Mint does that for you. Requirements, an internet connection, VirtualBox installed on a host computer, and enough memory to run both the host computer and the Linux Mint guest. Additional info, you've got the Linux Mint download page, the home page, and a Linux Mint PDF documentation booklet, about 50 pages long, that explains how to use Linux Mint, a user manual in other words. Disclaimer. While this video demonstrates an actual install of Linux Mint 16 in VirtualBox, I can't fully verify this will work with all combination of hardware and software out. So if you wish, you can stop the video and read a disclaimer. Before you download Linux Mint 16 Petra, you've got a number of choices, 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm going to pick 64-bit. And then you've got one for no codecs. Basically, it doesn't have multimedia support. The OEM version that basically manufacturers can use to install Cinnamon on their desktops or laptops. And then you've got the Mate desktop. I'm going to pick 64-bit with the Cinnamon desktop. Click on that. And then it asks you to go to some mirrors and since I'm in the United States I'm gonna come down here where it says USA and I don't know where some of these places are so so I'm gonna pick uh, James Madison University I know that's in uh, Virginia and click Save File my browser is set where I can pick where to save the file and I save it in local disk downloads Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop and simply click save. Now it says 12 minutes here. Come back when it's fully saved. Here the file has downloaded. I'm going to verify that. Simply open up Windows and I would go to the downloads directory. And where do I have Linux Mint? Cinnamon Desktop, open it, and there it is, the 64-bit ISO. So that's verified and it's downloaded. The next step is to create a virtual guest. Here I am in Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to create a new Linux Mint machine, so I'm going to go to my Linux Mint group, click on right-click, New Machine. I'm just going to call it Mint 1601 for the type it's Linux and then I'm going to use Ubuntu 64-bit because I've downloaded a 64-bit ISO. Click Next and I'm going to give it 1024. Uh, it really likes more memory, more RAM, random access memory than this. If you want to run a machine with less memory, get a 32-bit machine. But uh, I'm going to pick 1024, click Next, Create, and just I'm going to take all default and dynamically allocate it. That way I don't use up my hard disk as much. Next, and it gives uh, file location and size. And I'm just let it go with the default. Only I'm going to pick 20 gigabytes. Click Create, and here. For system, I'm going to make some changes here. One, because it's a 64-bit, uh, I'm going to allow it to get hold of two processors on the system. Click OK. Display, it says 12 megabytes. I usually take it up to the maximum. And let's enable 3D acceleration. Click OK. One other thing up here in system, one other thing that I want to make sure. I want to make sure enable IO APIC is 
uh, chosen here. The reason for this is that sometimes when a uh, Linux Mint is installed, it tends to hang up on the first install, and this way I can shut it down using the power shutoff signal. Click OK here. And storage. I'm going to go to the empty CD-ROM and then pick the folder where the uh, ISO file is located. Choose a virtual CD. I must have picked the wrong one there. And in this case, it's local disk C downloads exactly where I downloaded it. Click Open. Click OK. So now my virtual guest is ready to start. So now I'm at the Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. Right click and start. And up comes the start up screen. And one thing I found with the 64-bit edition, it tends to start uh, install fairly slow. Linux Mint 16. Nice music there. So we go over here to install Linux Mint. And it's going to take a few seconds, 30 seconds or so before it gets going. You'll notice that it did change color. Now it's taken me a full two minutes, so about two minutes and 15 seconds to come up to the welcome screen. So uh, just to let you know, be aware that this takes a while. My language is English. You can pick your own. Click Continue. And it requires at least 7.8 gigabytes available drive sp space and connected to the internet. In my case, both are true. And it's got a check mark here to indicate that. Click Continue. I'm just going to simply erase disk and install Linux Mint. This is on a virtual guest now. And I'm also going to use the LVM with the Lumen Logic Volume Manager. And simply click Install Now. I do not like encrypting the uh, Linux Mint installation because sometimes I find that if you're working with a laptop or something, it doesn't quite work right or some non-standard configuration. I'm in the Eastern United States time zone. Click Continue. Keyboard Layout. I'm English US and I'm going to simply click continue. Now it asks for a name and I'm going to give it the computer's name. I'm going to give it the same name that I did in VirtualBox so I don't get confused. Mint 16 but put everything in lowercase 1601 for Mint 16 version 01 and I'm going to put in a password. Now it says weak password uh, that's because I have over a hundred virtual machine. I just use the same password in them. Uh, you should use a password that has a number in it, a special character like a star or a pound key, capital and lowercase. And I always like to require my password to log in. Click continue. And now you've got a uh, set of screens that you can read and go through while Linux Mint is installing. This is your welcome and thank you. And you can click here. Basically these screens tell you a little bit about what software is on here. In this case it's Firefox, Mozilla Firefox. Talks a little bit about that. Music and CDs. Banshee is the included software. Videos and DVDs. My preference here is VLC because it works both on Windows and Linux. And you've got something to manage your photos. G-Thumb. And then you've got Thunderbird Mail Client. XChat. Go on to the next one. And then you've got LibreOffice. I don't know what this Microsoft Office support is. But it might be a way to manage files or, or change file formats. You'll have to check that out on your own, and then some PDF support. And then you've got, it says, uh, 30,000 free applications from the Software Manager. This is the, pretty much the same as Ubuntu, actually using the Ubuntu Software Manager 
but uh, it's got a different skin on it, I believe. And then install Wine and Run Windows software in Linux Mint. Or install VirtualBox and run Windows itself within Linux Mint. Now one of the things here I've found that uh, with this version of Linux Mint is that it already has the VirtualBox guest editions and uh, DKMS file already installed in it so that I won't have to do that after the install. And then you can customize your desktop. And of course there are, you've got your updates which will demonstrate how to do that after the install. And then you've got some help. You can download the introduction to Linux Mint. It's a PDF file. It says Linux Mint is the fourth most widely used operating system. It's talking about desktop after Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. So now I'll let it turn on and then the next time we come to a screen where you have to make a decision, come back to it. No sense watching this whole thing for the next half hour or 45 minutes. Okay, now it says the installation is complete. Installation is finished. You can continue testing Linux Mint now. But let's uh, restart the computer. Or restart the virtual guest. Now I've had it hang up on a virtual uh, guest on the restart, but it really hasn't created any problems. I'll show you what to do. I'm going to wait about a minute here and then come back and show you what to do if, if it hangs up on the restart. Okay, I've waited about a minute. That's about as much patience as I have. So I'm going to go up here to the uh, VirtualBox menu and, and click on Machine. And I'm going to click ACPI Shutdown. Now, I don't think this will work. But that is what I usually try first because that sends a ACPI Shutdown signal to the machine. And hopefully you'll keep all your settings changed. But since that didn't work, I'm going to go to close. Uh, I'm going to go to close and power off. Simply power off the machine. That'll work. Click OK. Now here it is. It's powered off. That's it for the install. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, do an update. Here I am with Mint 1601 installed. I'm going to right click it and click Start. Then, of course, I'm going to minimize the uh, VirtualBox Manager and maximize. It's taking a little over a minute for this screen to show up. Click on the mic, enter your password, click OK. You notice that it expands to fill the full screen. That's simply because it's got guest editions already installed. So you've got a welcome screen with some tutorials. I'm simply going to close it. I'm going to go to the menu. And here you've got applications, accessories, graphics. I'll let you go ahead and play with this. I'm just going to go to the Update Manager. And if I type in update, you notice here it says update manager. It asks for your password again. Every time you have to make an administrative change to the computer, it asks for your password. Look for what updates are going to be needed. So first thing that it asks this Mint Update 4.5. It's a package. It, I'm going to select it and then install updates. Once that package has been installed, you've got looks like 86 updates or something. Make sure that you have the select all selected. It's pretty much already done, but just verify. And then click install updates. I'll come back when the uh, updates are fully installed. It says downloading file of 252 so it's going to take a while. Well the files have downloaded. Now the software has to be installed. 
Now, in the middle of this install, it says replace configuration file, etc. GNOME defaults.list. It says the file was modified. Anyway, I'm going to say replace it because I'm just doing the update, so I figure everything should be okay. So click on replace. Let it keep going. I'll come back when it's fully installed. It appears that everything's fully installed. Just the box just dropped right out. I thought I could come back to the end. But anyway, I'll show you something here. And that is if I go to Devices, Install Guest Edition CD Image. I want to show you that it's already installed. I'm going to click on Run here. And I'm going to click on Authenticate. You appear to have a version of VirtualBox Guest Editions on your software which install from a different source. So just to show you that VirtualBox is already in, comes previously installed in Linux Mint 16. So I'm going to put in No just to show you that that's already installed. Click OK. We'll press Return. And the next thing, just simply shut it down and restart. This time it's taken about a minute and a half to restart. And you'll notice that I didn't have to power off the machine from the VirtualBox menu. Okay, so now that's taken about another minute and a half. And so now you're ready to go ahead and uh, play with this to your heart's content. It's ready to go. Thank you.